Now that you've turned your attention to Auburn, do you, when they switch out quarterbacks, does anything they do schematically change, or does it even matter who they play at quarterback? They they stay the same. Um, for us, uh, you know, with what we've seen on tape, uh, really the schemes, for the most part, remain the same. Um, they do a good job uh, spreading you out, running the football, and, uh, being physical, and utilizing the entire field. So uh, both quarterbacks have been experienced, been in the system for a few years now. So I'm sure there's a, a good trust factor. And uh, moving forward, you know, we, we've got to prepare for, for, for both quarterbacks. Uh, one might be a little bit more of a, a runner than the other, but uh, they both, uh, you know, I think 13's like Schusler for us. You know, sneaky fast. What do you know about James Franklin, the kid, the transfer kid? Uh, he's speaking fast. He's real fast. Um, and uh, he can really fly take the top off he doesn't need much probably a little bit like Nick Marshall and uh, that's really about all I know uh, taking a look at some of the things they did in 13 uh, with Nick Marshall and the quarterback run game but uh, you know I'm sure they he knows how to throw it as well so with white do you think he's a little bit maybe underrated under the radar type of, of quarterback that I don't know we we respect him I think they were in uh, Virtually every game they played last year, uh, they were in. You know, they had a bunch of drop balls, a uh, very inconsistent receiver, and uh, uh, had their opportunities deep in uh, many of the games, and including Alabama, to, to win those games. So, um, you know, they they took Georgia to the end, they took Ole Miss to the end, they took Alabama to the end. I mean, I'm just naming a few teams, but. Um, I think, I think they came on the short end against uh, a triple overtime against Arkansas, I believe. And uh, so that was kind of the tale of the, the, the uh, season for them last year. And uh, so doing this long enough, you know, you can be on both sides of, of that, you know, where you just can't get a break. And that was kind of the case for them a year ago. And uh, But uh, they were really close. And they're very, very talented. They've recruited well. If they don't announce the starter until... <clears throat> The night of the game is that a disadvantage for you at all, or does it just not matter? I can care less. It doesn't matter one bit to us. So, I'm it's not coach speak. It's <laughs> we're going to prepare and do what we do and adjust it as we go. It's so that's up to them. You know whether or not they have confidence in their guy. How much of an advantage is it to have the extra time to prepare as opposed to the four or five standard days that you get? Well, I think it goes both ways. They, it's an advantage for them if you look at it as an advantage for us. So. Um, Sometimes we can be, as coaches, our own worst enemy and uh, have too much time. So, uh, but I'm, I'm thankful that we do. Um, they're a little bit unfamiliar uh, in some ways. In uh, some ways there's some carryover uh, with some things our offensive uh, staff does. Uh, it goes without saying with the background with Coach Morris and uh, Coach Malls on uh, having, uh, you know, shared a lot of ideas through the years. And um, so, you know, it's given us time to, to do more than just get ready for Auburn. It's really get ready for our season now. Not yep. that you would have to tell us, but are you, you feeling like maybe you're starting to get a feel for what your two deep or three deep is going to be? Uh, I mean, I say, would say the three deep, you know, who we feel like, and we're still trying to work through some of that. Uh, again, guys that we can trust and, um, again, depth. And what if this guy goes down and who can do more than one thing? So we're still working through that process. I think there's some clarity on a few guys, and, and uh, uh, it's still a little bit gray on some other positions. So um, it's not a bad thing. Uh, it's not like we we don't have depth at, at you know we've got I think some level of depth everywhere, and uh, so what? Well, but it's really kind of that that second tier guy as much as it is anything. Who who do we trust to go in next? Yesterday, and at some positions, there's more than I'm sorry, more than uh, more than a couple of guys. Yesterday, Dabo mentioned five or six that linebacker you felt like you win with. Can you kind of contrast that to last year when you felt like maybe you didn't have those kind of numbers in your opinion and your feel as you go out to practice? Yeah, I think it's it's as much as anything as it's we got more guys that can execute. I think consistently, and what level they can play at. We're still, I think we're still developing and improving, but I think more guys that know what to do uh, with more assuredness and. Uh, if we do have somebody that needs a break or 
somebody that's screwing up or somebody that 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 uh, gets hurt, and we can put the next guy in and feel like that we can still execute at a at a pretty consistent level. Dabo said Shaq Smith maybe on the bubble a little bit. Yeah. What does he have to do here in this final, you know, week and a half, and maybe even after that first game's played well, to, you know, to work I don't himself back in? Necessarily detail it out with every guy. Um, Shaq's like a, a a lot of young guys. He's shown some flashes. Um, uh, works incredibly hard, a tough guy, cares, very competitive, but in some places he does well and some others he's just not quite as sure of himself as you'd like him to be. And so really it's the big picture, you know, where he's competing and do you feel like you have to, you know, use his year, do you need him right now, is he ready to play uh, confidently and aggressively? And, uh, and if there's a little bit of inconsistency there and you don't need them, that's kind of what we're weighing. So some of it has more to do with our situation and not as much as it has to do with Shaq as well. I and mean, it's a little bit of both, but uh, Shaq's done well and uh, he's got a bright future. And so we're just trying to weigh whether or not we don't want to. You don't want to play all the freshmen either if right. you don't have to. So you'd like to have a little bit of reload. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Stay in your gap, okay? <laughs> uh, I said reload. That means we started the play, did it again, because it wasn't like it needed to be. <laughs> um, but but we, you know, you would rather kind of have a little bit of separation as well. If you bring in 20 freshmen, uh, and they're talented guys, and probably 15 might be ready to play to some capacity, and then, but you'd rather rather play say 10 and redshirt 10, and uh, just kind of throwing that out there. It's, don't hold me to that, but right. uh, so that's kind of where Shaq is right now. Um, and it, he's only played linebacker two years in his in his football career. He's really he's been a D end, and then he's been at a couple different high schools. And I know I've touched on this again. If you compare him to a guy like Trey Lamar, he's been in. The, the same little league system and the same farm system, so to speak, through uh, middle school and all through high school, and been coached with the same types of techniques and systematically. And you know, I was growing up with trainers and uh, you know, and all, and, and a really consistent uh, weight program. And so, where where they came in might, on the outside, look okay. Here's two five-star guys, but Shaq's still got a, uh, more of a foundation to learn the game and to some of the intricacies of playing the position a little bit. So, but I've been excited about where he's at and as well as a bunch of the other freshmen. Coach Sweeney was talking in great detail about Kayvon Wallace, how versatile he is, and comparing yeah. him to Marcus Gilchrist a lot. Mm -hmm. um, how, how much of a luxury is it to have a guy like that, especially given the inexperience you have in the secondary? Yeah, he's a really good football player, and um, he's. Uh, it doesn't always happen this way, but he, he's the guy that we recruited off of tape. And, um, we thought he was tough, um, just in recruiting. Thought he had a toughness to him that we really liked. Uh, real low maintenance, and that's that's held true as well. But he's got instincts. He's got, he's really physical. He's got a great burst, excellent top end speed, uh, great short area quickness, really good ball skills. He's fearless competitor. I'm throwing out a lot of really good uh, mm -hmm. compliments. Um, uh, but he's really done well at a bunch of different positions, and we're kind of trying him out. At, because of his versatility and then to some of the developments at some other positions as we've gone into whatever it's been up close to three weeks at camp and so then you're like okay well we're good here let's see if, what he can do over at this spot and that's not ideal that you do that to a young guy but we're trying to give him a little bit of exposure because we feel that good about maybe him being able to latch on one of those positions this season and and then kind of taking off from there and maybe a couple of positions so, uh, but it's really is his physicality and then he's just knack. If you tell him a particular scheme, he, he takes it from the meeting room for the most part and comes out here and, and can execute it. And that's very abnormal. So uh, he's, a, he's mature uh, beyond his years, uh, both mentally and physically from, from those things. We only hear about some of the big runs that the offense has had. We don't know the situations, but is there any concern on your part with the run game right now? Stopping the run game? I mean, there's... I'm always desperate to stop it. Uh, they've had a couple. Uh, always here. I don't. I don't always see, but we've had a few. Uh, they're good enough to break some tackles and do that. But you know, uh, you know, we've corrected some mistakes that we've made, and, um, and my concern. I'm always. Oh, we're going against a really good running offense. <laughs> you dang right. It's got a nice play-action game. I'm concerned. I'm always. Uh, 
uh, I wouldn't say, ah, oh, yeah, we're going to smoke these guys. That's not uh, that's not how I feel. So um, I, I think you know we we're good enough uh, to defend them well, but we, we got uh, again a long season. We got a lot of work to do, a lot of improvement needed, but. I like where we're at moving forward, and we'll see. And when you go out and start playing, you know, other people, you kind of find out a lot about yourself and uh, both the good, bad, and the ugly. Is Marcus still out? Who? Marcus? No, he's back. He's back. Yeah. How You're not supposed to ask me about injuries, right? <laughs> that right. Chris Wings. <laughs> that was nice to you. Well, since he is back, I mean, how's, how's he kind of adjusted to get back? It's Deion forward? Sanders out there. <laughs> he's, he's done well. He's done well. No, I'm just, he's, he's done well. He's done well. Uh, uh, you can see his experience. Uh, you know, coming back as opposed to a young guy being hurt and being rusty. He's a, an older guy that's kind of okay. I know where I'm supposed to be and my leverage and uh, some of those things. So he's done well. He's got to work and get back into shape. Biggest thing. Is he behind maybe a little I bit? I don't know. Well? Probably probably a little bit because he's he's not in great shape yet. But he's not. I mean, he's a he's an athlete, though. You know, so we'll see. He'll be ready to, to help us this year for sure. In terms of rock coverage, where, how does he compare to Fields and Carter? Oh, he's right there with him. <clears throat> he's right there with him. You know, he ran four three. Mark ran four three. Uh, Mullen ran four four one. So those guys can all fly. Yeah, that field corner spot. I mean, is, is coverage the primary? It's got, you got to do it. You got to do it all. But that's one of it. Yeah. I mean, you just got to have awareness and fight and good ball skills and the ball's in the air. You got to play it well and not panic. And and, uh, and we try to help them too. You know, we do a variety of things. Try to help them with both their techniques and the scheme. And uh, and so they got to kind of know more than you would think, as opposed to you know McKenzie often got that confused. Like I'm just going to come out here. And, Cover. I know you call cover two, but I'm just going. I got this dude, you know. And, <laughs> and so sometimes that was good, and then sometimes it wasn't so good. But uh, no, that guy's got a. It, that skill set is important. But, uh, there's a. I want a really good football player there as much as I want anything. Does Fields have an improvisational gene? Is he is he a little bit that way? That it's like, oh, I, got yeah. I don't know. I don't know. If it was, I think he's scared to death he's going to bust, so he's trying to do exactly the way we want it right now. Uh, he doesn't have that latitude yet. <laughs> with, uh, with Austin Bryant out at Auburn, um, is, is there any potential that Christian Wilkins could, could start to end, or is it still Jurgen's spot to lose, more or less? Oh, we're still working uh, with that group. It really doesn't matter who we start. We'll go in there wanting to play four or five guys, so uh, we'll see. By the time we get around there next week, is he one of the best two pass rushers you oh, have right now? Who's that? Uh, uh, Christian. Christian, um, specifically with Austin. Would he be one of your two? He's, best yeah, I think he's he's in that top probably three group of guys. Yeah, yep, he is. He sure is. We got we're, we got some good ones up front. And regardless of who goes out there first, I mean, is it looking like Christian's going to be out there you know, spending a lot of time out at end in that opener? Just the um, one, we're going to play, play him at both. We'll yeah. play him at both. He's got the. He's in great shape, got great endurance, super smart. A lot of people think, oh, that's hard. And typically it, it would be, but not for him. And uh, he just got, he's just different. Uh, how he thinks, what he knows, and, and then athletically. When talking about Auburn, it, you know, the spread, everybody kind of runs a, a variation of it. But is there one team that you play yearly or, or have played a lot that they kind of like, they're very similar? Ohio State was like them. State was our offense. Different variations of Georgia Tech. Just in the shotgun one, maybe a little bit uh, more. Yeah, I'm just, you know, it's still triple option principles right. and cut blocks and discipline and fitting it up. Do you, do you expect many gimmicks? Oh, yeah. Toys? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I have them all ready for, for good old Clemson. Yeah. The opener, man. Are you kidding me? Uh, you know. They, they've got their, they got them all. They got them all, just go down the list. <laughs> They'll have a bunch of them ready. Who's, who's mostly serving as scout team quarterback? Uh, is there it's Cooper. Real. It's Cooper. Yeah. How's that? I, I sub for him every once in a while. <laughs> you good at that? I lit up the no fly zone yesterday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which one of the three quarterbacks are you then? No, no. I'm not on the dip chart. Man. I'm Jimmy Green Beans.
Is uh, Xavier Kelly doing better now? Yeah, he's doing a lot better. Uh, he knows uh, he knows his way around now. <laughs> yeah, he's not seeing butterflies then. <laughs> I, I'd say it very uh, jokingly because yeah. I'm just mm -hmm. thankful that he's okay. But yeah, he's he's actually making rapid improvement. Yeah, he's doing good. That makes me Yeah.